Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game, we're taking a look at the game Enchanters, Overlords, and of course, a couple other additional expansion content in here. Uh, this is the game Enchanters. It's made by Gindy, as well as Mythic Games. They've partnered up to make this game, and it is available on Kickstarter. It plays two to four players with a solo player variant. It is both cooperative and competitive, and it adds a bunch of additional little aspects to the game that are like, uh, uh, expansion content like you can fight against overlords or additional character classes you can add to the game regardless though you are playing as an enchanter you'll get your own board you'll get your own spell as well as an enchantment or weapon item and enchantment and you will be uh, attempting to make your character stronger as you go throughout the game it's got a tableau management aspect where you will be gathering cards placing them on top of cards you've already gathered gaining bonus effects like attack and defense you'll be defeating monsters on this track as it moves throughout the game and you'll also be dealing with overlords overlords are huge beasts that cause a lot of destruction in their wake you'll be fighting against them to gather victory points and they will be messing about as well additionally there's a ton of different towns in the game you'll be using one of them and you will be attempting to rest and gather resources and obtain new cards as the deck runs out and eventually after the deck runs out you're going to tally up all your victory points and victory points will come in many forms whether you're fighting against the overlord gathering certain cards that give you specific symbols or icons that give you more benefit as well as of course the monsters you defeat throughout the game they'll give you points as well you'll tally all those up and if you have the most points you'll win the game just be careful though because you can take damage in this game gathering wound cards which will hurt you in some way throughout the entire game giving you this nasty passive negative benefit or negative ability that is going to stack and as they stack things get much more dire in this game it has a hard mode easy normal extremely hard variant that can all be changed with a ton and i mean a ton of different replayability this game has so many decks there's no way you're going to go through all the possible different combinations but you're surely going to get a large variance of different play experiences based on the overlord town and your deck set up for the game overlords or enchanters overlords with all this extra stuff which we'll go ahead and talk about down below i'll explain the competitive variant the cooperative variant the different types of overlords you'll be fighting and how you'll be fighting them depending on the variants and then we'll come up we'll discuss the game specifically and i will give you my opinion on this tableau building adventure game of enchanters here is the insanely variable world of Enchanters, Overlords, as well as Odyssey and the base game. We're going to go through all the components real quick here, well, as quickly as we possibly can. And then I'm going to give you a brief overview of how the game is played. There's so many videos out right now that explain the game in full detail. But nevertheless, I'm going to go ahead and just give you this feel for the game as well as how it's going to play out with all the different variables so you can get a chance to see those in case some video doesn't cover it. This is the game. This is the main board. These are the player boards. And then of course we have the deck of cards, etc., etc., with all these other stuff here. So let's just go throughout it in, in piece by piece. The main board here is gonna have the graveyard. It's going to have one overlord card of your choosing. You're gonna shuffle the deck up and put one here. Each overlord is different in every way. And based on the number of players, you would set the number of these tokens on the specific overlord. Once you've removed all of these tokens that will defeat the overlord for good and they're removed, defeating overlords will grant you victory points as well as some other benefits depending on the type of overlord this is here the crystal pile it's where you're going to be taking crystals from and putting crystals back into the supply whenever you need crystals by resting and other certain actions you'll be gathering from here this is the currency of the game that will allow you to buy cards in this journey track here based on uh, how far along they are towards the deck this is the wound pile you'll be taking wounds whenever you deal with the overlord in some way or whenever you're fighting monsters and your defense is not higher than their attack. This is the wound deck. You're going to get these cards whenever you have 10 wounds. You'll get rid of those 10 wounds. You'll take one of these cards at random and then you'll flip it up and that will be with you for the entire game. It'll have some type of negative boon effect which will hurt you or hinder you as well as being worth negative 10 points at the end of the game for each wound card and minus one point for each wound. 
This is the deck of the game. This is the adventure deck. And as you can see, there's tons of decks over here. As you get each and every expansion, you'll get new decks to uh, choose from throughout the game. Regardless though, in the base game, every player will simply choose one deck and then you're going to shuffle those decks together and put it into a stack here at this adventurer's deck. And then after that, based on the number of players, three cards for each player, you'll be taking items and I guess enchantments from the bottom of the deck and putting them on the top, which will then make sure that there's only items and enchant uh, items and enchantments on this main journey track to begin with. But as you know, the game, as it advances, there's gonna be more and more monsters popping out due to that, as well as the fact that there are tons of them in the deck. So after that, you're gonna take the top six cards, which are going to be items and enchantments, and you're gonna put them along this track here. And to start the track off, it's going to be a zero cost item, a one, two, three, four, and five cost, depending on where they're located. And as you can see it down here, these are the values of the cards. This is the specific, uh, what do you want to call it? The village card deck. You'll choose one of them for the entire game and you'll use that village. And I strongly suggest you choose specific uh, decks or a specific combination of decks based on the color of the village because that's going to help you along the game. You don't have to, but for the most part, they be it benefits you to do so because these villages all have unique actions and bonuses and resting benefits provided to you with the specific color of deck. So this purple deck here this one is the uh I, what did this guy here called i don't know what they're called like fairies or something like that is going to be purple along with this one which benefits you on speed and this one specifically has speed so it's very useful for you to uh, put this deck with this specific one there's also additional tokens here which will benefit the overlords in some unique way and some other tokens that specific overlords will need uh, additionally here you have your player board in every single game you're going to start with a fist of enchanting now each of them have their own unique flavor text which i'll talk about in my review but if you don't want to play with these you want something more uh, more interesting then you can actually add banners and classes so as opposed to a fist you can choose a banner you'll be drawing two of these and picking one of them and replacing your fist with it and for classes you'll be taking your enchanting card away you'll draw two of these and choose one and place it so for instance instead of a fist of enchanting perhaps you're going to get a northern banner of rogues the specific cards for the banners and classes are going to give you unique combinations of benefits whereas opposed to this one here will be focused more on attacks and whatnot so if you want to play the more advanced variant you can do that as well you'll have two of these little circular markers which will indicate your attack attack and strength which will change throughout the game and every single player is going to start with five crystals as currency and additionally each player is going to get a player reference which will show you all the different symbols in the game as well as the turn order and what you can do on your turn these are all the rule books etc etc there is a token that will be utilized throughout the game that has like a sand and a, another type of timer you'll be using it for like flipping and whatnot and once you flip it the first time after whatever it tells you to flip you'll just simply turn turn it over. Uh, there's also these cards here, and these cards are basically changes to these bosses to let you play them in the cooperative variant where you're actually fighting against an overlord in general, because most of these bosses here are just meant for the competitive variant. Over here on the far side is the four wanted bosses. They're very challenging. They have their own unique decks that are included in their AI deck. And you're going to be using these bosses to fight in the competitive cooperative mode, as, as well as you can choose to make the game even more challenging with these wound threshold cards. Wound thresholds gonna be based on the amount of damage you take when you're playing the cooperative game. Over on the other side here, you're gonna have this little board here, which is going to indicate the boss's HP. If you're playing the co cooperative variant, it starts at 99 health, and if you can get it to zero, then you will win. There's some other unique cards that you can utilize, as well as the AI deck, which is only used in the cooperative variant. You'll mix that up with any cards that are associated with your wanted boss, and that will become your boss's deck for the cooperative variant that you'll have to deal with in certain ways. If you wanna spice up your game just a little bit more, there is this event deck here. In the event deck, basically these cards are going to be shuffled into the main deck, three per player, per game, and when they pop out onto the field, they'll attach themselves in certain ways, or they will instantly take some type of action that will usually negatively affect you. They basically make the game a little bit more variable, a little bit more different, changes the way the game is played, and you can add them if you would like. And then, of course, we've got mermaids, we've got mummies, dragons, we have mages and bandits, we've got goblins and fairies, we have a ton of different classes. There's probably at least 20 different classes here 
if not more that you can select from when playing the cooperative variant and the competitive variant. As for the other aspects for the cooperative variant, when you're playing the co-op mode, you'll simply choose two decks per player, but you will only use cards from the decks that you choose if they have the number two on the back uh, right hand side of each of the cards, and then you're going to put them into a deck. So when you're playing two players, you'll each choose two decks and take out all the twos and shuffle them up, and that will form your new journey deck or your adventure deck in which you can go ahead and play the game that way. Uh, when you are playing the main variant of the game, which is the competitive mode, you'll simply be fighting this guy, and once he's gone, he's gone for good. However, if you're playing the cooperative variant, you're going to be using a track that dictates their health, as well as one of the specific bosses that they let you play against, and you'll be dealing specifically with just that bad guy. And that's pretty much the setup for at least just two players, but it functions the same way with more additional players, as well as it talks a little bit about the cooperative variant, the competitive variant, and all the little add-ons that we have, which I think there's probably even more for the game Enchanters, a lot going on here. But as you can see, this is pretty much everything I have to show you. Let's go ahead and take it down below where I will just go ahead and explain how a turn is played out for the competitive variant. When we come up, I'll discuss more about the cooperative variant and how the overlords work. But just to give you an idea of how the game plays and its feel and its flow, we'll come down and I'll explain a turn or two of the game Enchanters. Okay, so back at it now to explain a two-player game of the game Enchanters in the competitive variant. The first thing you're going to do is make sure you choose a Fist of Enchanting, which is the same as any other Fist of Enchanting with their own unique flavor text, or you can play the modded variant with banners and classes. You're also going to make sure your tokens are set here. You have got your five, vict your five uh, currency, as well as you're going to have your player reference cards to explain how a turn is played. You've got your journey track all set out and everything is ready to go your wound deck all your wounds and crystals you've chosen one of the many different overlords to play against you only need one so the rest of them and when i mean rest of them i mean there's a ton of them to choose from i'll even go ahead and just show you how many different ones there are this could go on for a while so i think you get the idea as well as of course choosing one of these specific cities and if you're playing the co-op you're just going to use this one here the enchanters guild but we're not playing the co-op so we're just going to use one of these and there is a lot to offer here as well. We're playing the Upper Olympus right here, so we'll go ahead and put the rest of these aside as well. Uh, we won't need this token either, and we won't need these additional co-op mode variant cards, so I'm gonna move those to the side, and we probably won't need these either, additional tokens for use. We have two of these tokens here because there's two players. We'll put one on this specific overlord per player that exists, and then we'll set these to the side because we will be using these throughout the game as well. To begin the game, simply choose one of the two players to begin and have them take their turn. And on your turn, it's fairly simple as to what you're going to do. You're either going to journey or you're going to rest. When you journey, you're simply going to choose any of the cards on this track here and choose it and then spend the resources in order to place it in one of the two slots available to you in your tableau. If you're choosing an item card, when you purchase that item, you'll place it in the item stack, which will be over here. And you're gonna make sure that they stack with the lines on, uh, on the bottom. So in this case, you see that line there, put this one right here. However, when it's the first card, your fist of enchant, your fist or your of enchanting, just place it all the way on top. But it will make a difference for later cards at later turns, because as you can see, when these things stack, you're gonna get additional bonus effects for your specific class, which is very, very useful. If you journey and there is a monster on the field, like for instance this one here, you can choose to attack it. It's gonna show you an HP, it's also going to show you an attack, and it'll show you some type of benefit and victory points to it. If your attack is more or equal to its health, you can simply defeat it. However, if you do not have defense or less defense than the attack here, you're going to take damage based on the difference. So right now, if my character was, if my character, for instance, did have five damage, but no defense, I could defeat this monster. It would function the same way as you know, my items and enchantments. I'd place it in the stack here and they're of course going to stack up as well. And when I defeat it, I'm going to take damage three minus my defense, which is currently zero. So I would take three wounds. I would simply take these and place them next to me. They count as negative victory points. And if I get 10 off to draw one of these cards here. And that's basically how monsters work. The rest of these cards here are simply going to be put into your tableau based on whether it's an enchantment or whether it's an item. My other option is I can choose to rest. And if I rest, each of the different locations will give you specific things you can do while resting. For instance, if I rest, I can take three coins or three of these crystals, 
or I can choose to heal, and I can choose to heal one point of HP, so I can reduce myself from having to, to lose that one victory point. These are also really interesting as well, because they provide different things. Like, you can, for instance, all players have plus one speed, and you get one victory point per each speed you have at the end of the game, and speed is a unique characteristic to this specific deck, which means that it costs you one less for each card in each of the slots for each speed you have. So if you have three speed and you buy this, it'll only cost you one, making speed a very relevant specific specific type of uh, item in this specific game mode. So that's basically how this specific one works. So resting is one way of gathering more resources to buy more cards, and journeying is going to let you fight monsters, as well as be able to buy specific items as well as enchantments and put them onto your board, stacking them up as you go along. The last thing you can do is challenge the boss here, and if you challenge the boss it works just like fighting a monster, and when you fight this boss here, uh, if you can defeat him and you'll take the damage, you're going to gain some one of these tokens here, which is worth victory points at the end of the game. All bosses function differently, and when you choose to rest, you'll be removing the, the far left-hand side card. And if that card has an icon based on this area over here, you're going to do whatever it says. So for instance, with this boss, when an item gets removed, when a monster gets removed, you're going to add one of these tokens to the specific area here. And if there is ever a token on here, you'll remove it and the current player will take five wounds. Or if a dragon gets removed from the board, you'll put one of these guys here and one of them on there and then remove this and the current player will take five wounds. So be careful when you choose to rest because that's going to be very detriment, det detrimental to you. Additionally, if you can remove these guys when you fight a monster one, the overlord and you beat it, you'll take the token and if there's ever no more tokens left, the overlord's defeated and you can ignore him. But until that happens, he's going to be very challenging. Some overlords also require a cost to challenge it. In this case, this one costs two crystals in order to do so. And that's basically the idea of the game. You'd think there's a lot to it, but it's actually very simple, building your tableau and increasing your value. So for instance, if this guy wanted to, he could take this one specifically here. This is an item, he'll place it here, and that's going to be solidified for zero cost. These will all move down. A new one will flip over. This guy's going to take his turn. Perhaps he wants to buy this, so he's going to have to spend three. He'll take this card, and then he'll place it on the enchanting area. He'll move these down. We'll flip up another one, and the game's just basically going to continue like that. If you run out of resources, maybe it's time to rest, but when you rest, make sure the boss doesn't do anything nasty to you, and when this entire deck runs out, when there's nothing left to the deck anymore, you're going to stop, you're going to tally up all your monsters, all of your enchantments and items, and whoever has the most points, based on whatever points this gives you, as well as the specific monsters in the game, is going to be the winner of the game, Enchanters Overlords. Now, let's talk about a little bit about the boss mode to the game. If you're fighting with a specific boss, like maybe we're fighting with Cerebus and we're playing the cooperative variant, each, each of the overlords is going to have a certain amount of health. In this case, it's going to be 99. You're going to take this deck here, which is specifically based on this character, as well as its token. And you're also going to take the AI deck. And this is the AI deck here. You'll put them together and you'll shuffle them up and set it aside. And during each round, you're going to have to flip one of these guys over and do whatever it says based on what the boss is at currently via health. So for instance, I'll take one of these cards here and show you. This one here shows you what the boss does when it has one flame and what it does when it has two and three flames. And that is dictated by the HP of the boss. So in this instance right now, it shows you one flame. When the boss gets dropped down to 69 health, it's going to be two flames. And then finally, three flames at 39 health and that makes it more and more challenging, basically has an enrage timer. And your objective is, in this game, to defeat the boss by challenging it, removing 10 points of HP from it, and getting it to zero. However, you'll lose if you have a, t a total sum of negative wounds based on the difficulty you choose. You wanna play easy, the entire party can have 50 wounds. If you wanna play very difficult, you'll play with just 25 wounds on the party. You'll also utilize additional tokens. And of course, like I said before, you'll utilize different decks based on the number two in the far right hand corner. And that's Enchanters. The entire game, as much as I can explain it to you without going into a full playthrough, which I'd like to do. And in fact, we'll probably be doing that at some point throughout the campaign to show you guys what the game is like playing with multiple players especially with the cooperative mode because that's the one I haven't gotten into as much as I have played the competitive modes uh, and I think you guys are going to enjoy this one if you like tableau buildings but more on that when we discuss my review up above
right now. So let's go ahead and discuss Enchanter's Overlords, as well as all of the additional variants provided in the game. Did I miss anything in the rules? I don't think so. I think I pretty much covered as much as I think you probably would need to understand how to play the game. I just didn't go into full depth as to how big your tableau is going to look like at the end of the game. It's definitely going to get rather large. You're going to be moving around your attack tokens and your defense tokens. And you're going to be attempting to gather as much potential power as you can throughout the game. Um, what are your first thoughts on the game? Uh, I, well, I initially thought I was going to be a deck builder because of the amount of cards, but... It was not even close. No, this is a tableau builder that reminds me a little bit like Ivion. I guess you don't really agree necessarily, but it Only just... Only the fact that you assemble uh, decks at the start of... The yeah, game. and That's I would say that it. those decks, though, facilitate a specific style of play, just like an Ivion. So if you want to play with specific decks and put them together, in this case, yes, anybody can purchase them, but that does initiate a specific way in which you're going to play this game, as well as how it's going to affect the specific type of village code you're playing with. There are certain dark, there are certain decks that are be definitely better than other decks when you're playing with them and facilitating your benefit in some way in order to increase your tableau and help yourself out whenever you need to rest throughout the game each deck also contains its unique style of play as for whether it's yeah. very aggressive as towards the monsters whether it's going to give you speed whether it's going to have to uh, give you the ability to gain strength or defense and all that kind of stuff and i think that's a really unique aspect to this game it's probably one of the most unique aspects of the game because there's not a lot of games where you you'll choose like to take decks. that cards take them out yeah if you don't so specifically there's certain aspects of this game that i don't like and those specific games aspects are the aggressive uh, decks so if i don't want to play an aggressive style of play like for instance which that one the knolls yeah that one is really aggressive and it hurts players in specific ways and i'm not as much for that because it affects the way i'm playing start a monster you defeated target player discards a monster yeah so there's like monsters i'm gathering and then they remove them after i've defeated them which drives me nuts target player discards a monster yes and so i'm never going for those cards my opponents are and then it kind of forces me to get them just so they don't affect me i like living in my own little bubble when playing tableau builders and i don't like my bubble to be disturbed and in this game there's certain decks that will definitely disturb my bubble of of, of of love and happiness in the game target player gives you a monster uh that's no no uh the wound deck when you take a certain amount of wounds each wound you take is going to make you lose basically victory points yep. and additionally there's certain passive abilities on these cards that, that, that will happen like you can't use attack and defense on top of enchanting cards or you can't fight monsters with HP greater than five. Maybe you'll just get one victory point and one attack and one defense at the cost of nine victory points, etc., etc. Some of them are better than others, but they're all not very good to have because they're guaranteed negative yeah, it's a penalty points for, for being that negative or negative ten points accumulated. Uh, I like the fact that they, not only that, but the village cards will make the game very different on their own, and they give you a lot of village yeah. cards. They give you a ton of them, and they all I think function there's differently. One for each deck. Plus several neutral ones. Yes. Uh, not only that too, but there's also a bunch of these guys here. These are all the overlords Overlord. that you can choose from in the game. And if you're playing cooperative or competitive, there is a wide variety of different ones that you can choose from that do different things based on what falls off of the board and how they affect the gameplay. In just the competitive mode where they're not as relevant, they still do a lot of things and you have to try and deal with them in the best way possible. You have to make sure you rest when certain cards are on the field in certain certain organizational areas and you want to not rest when there are cards like monsters that are going to fall off the field and hurt yeah. you in certain ways, just like the example I explained. Um, but I do like that add-on. I think it does provide a lot to the game. Uh, this little dial here represents the cooperative variant, in which case you're trying to reduce the boss's HP to zero, and the boss gets more challenging as the game goes on because you're using that AI deck. And when you use that AI deck, uh, it, it's not so nasty to begin with. But as the boss loses that HP and you have to choose different cards, uh, abilities to do different things to you, it starts really sucking. Uh, additionally, too, of course, there's four main wanted monsters in the game with their own unique wanted cards, and you'll add those to the neutral deck. But just so that you get even more variants in the cooperative mode, they actually give you a ton of these uh, basically front and back boss monster cards or overlord cards that let you play cooperative with the basic competitive bosses. So you get even cool. more. Yeah, which is really cool. I really like that aspect of the game as well. And then, of course, dealing with the monsters and getting these, or getting, dealing with the overlords and getting these tokens here, which will give you certain victory points throughout the game, is nice. Uh, 
How about the artwork? What do you think about the artwork? Oh, the artwork's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I really agree with you. I, I really like the artwork to this game. I think they put a lot of time and effort. There's a lot of variance to the artwork. And each of the decks has its own unique feel as to the type of theme that's going around. Yeah, one of my complaints usually with games like this is that they the art is all the same. Like, oh, here's the, the cleric deck. Uh, all, all, all of them are just the same cleric over and over again. But each of these have two or three copies of a card with the same art. Yep. And so, then the rest are all... And the, so this this deck has like 10 different arts. And they all have a different theme, too. This one yep. has like an Egyptian theme mm -hmm. to yep. it, which is this really is the, cool. The mummies, Egyptian theme. And so each of the decks have their own feel, their own theme, their own unique color, which also adds to the type of village that you're going to be dealing with in the game, which also changes how you're trying to play. Uh, in this type of game, like I said before, I like it to where I'm just building my tableau. What about you? That's how I usually like it, is playing by myself and uh, not having other people mess with me. So you're not a big fan of the car the same thing I'm not a big fan of, is that yeah. aggressive style play. But for those of you who are very aggressive out there, this is going to have that. It's going to have the option of either or. And then, of course... Everybody gets to choose their own style of play based on the deck they pick. So if you're aggressive and you're not and you're not a fan of the passive playing aspect of the game, you can choose that aggressive deck. But maybe me and Grant are playing with you, and we don't like that aggressive nature as much. So we're going to pick. Yeah. We're, well, we'll just let them play. But they only get one deck, which will mix them with our two decks, which are going to be a lot more passive, a lot more fixing our own play area to make us do the best we possibly can in the game. People who like games that have tableau management to them are going to enjoy this game, I would say. I think it has a lot to offer, and I think it's really unique as to how you're stacking cards, and it's giving you more attack. You have to choose when you want to cover certain things, and when you don't, because if you cover a card that has a lot of attack and defense, you're going to lose out on that and only get the benefit provided on the bottom of the card. Whereas maybe you don't actually want to get rid of that card, or you want to move that card with another card so that you can place a card down because there are certain cards that yeah, really benefits. Yeah, temporarily gain three attack, but when you recover, when you replace it, it doesn't have any bonus. Yep. So. so it has a lot of that aspect in it. There's a lot of choice. Now, the game itself is rather simple, and if you just want to play a very simple version of the game, you can. You don't have to use the overlords. You don't have to use the banners or classes. You don't have to use... Uh, most of the decks you can just choose to use the base decks and you yep. can get this very simple play game where you're just either choosing to rest and regroup or choosing to buy slash fight uh, and that is a very simplistic style of play with still quite a lot of choice and variance but something that people that are more into gateway games can just just jump into and play this yeah, game this is one of those easy to learn difficult to master style games yes and with each of the expansions the rulebook explains specifically what it provides and i would actually agree for the most part that that's true if you're going to add the classes and the banners it's going to provide a different style of play than just using the base yeah, it's kind of unique because it's like it makes the game easier but the rules are more complex yeah yeah and it tells you that it also tells you what specific expansions will make the game more variable based on luck yeah. whereas opposed to some of the expansion content will make it just more challenging or even easier when you're playing with certain overlords the you first know, like the event deck makes it more luck based as opposed to you know the events come out and then random things happen as opposed to just random items come out that doesn't really have any effect it's just like the order you get a and of course there's the four main bosses in the game which are obviously more challenging than the ones that you could just choose to play with by for stacking the card ones. on it. Yep, definitely for the co-op specifically. And of course adding that extra stack of cards is nice. And realistically, there's I couldn't ask them to add any more to this game. There's enough here for me to play for quite some time. And if you're a person who likes to collect it all, you can obviously do that as well. It provides that ability of like a living card game. This yep. is more of like a living board game that keeps giving you more and more variance for what it's worth. Uh, any negatives that you can think of? Uh, some of the decks were a little take that when we first played. We didn't really know how it was going to go, and we, we had a bunch of take that cards. You're like, ah, oh, I don't like this game. And I'm like, well, actually, you just don't like these orange cards here. Yeah, yeah, it was exactly. I was sitting there the first time we played. You know, it was just the first time. We're going through it, and specific deck, the Knoll deck, I think, is the one, where it kept hitting me and hitting me, and it was just like, I can't stand this. It's driving me nuts. And then I started realizing it's actually just that deck that's 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 bothering me. Play it again, didn't use that deck, used something else, played a more passive experience, really, really got into the game, really, really enjoyed it. And I think it's going to vary depending on how you choose to play and what you like based on playing this game. If you Sounds like Tableau right. Builders, you'll enjoy it. If you don't like playing a Tableau Builder, it's not going to be the game for you. It does function just like one. And of course, there is the aspect of choosing Take That. When you're playing, if you want an extremely aggressive style game, you can throw that together for sure as well. Components, quality, 
all that's very good. This uh, has actually a bunch of extra stuff in it from the base game. Mm -hmm. It gives you the boards and all that kind of stuff. And I'm not sure if this is exactly what you need to play or if they're having a better quality contents in the Kickstarter campaign, but you can go ahead and check out down below and see what you think. Overall, though, for just what it is here, I'm happy. I'm very happy with like what it is. Games. Yeah, yeah, I'm very happy. It comes with a ton of stuff. They've got the single mode, which you can play with just, you, you play as two players, play by yourself. You can play the cooperative mode. You can play the competitive mode. You can add in all the variables and all the expansions and all the extra stuff if you want or not. Uh, That's how, how you should do it. Yeah, yeah, this game just Options got me hyped. for everyone. Yeah, because there's just so much You get to an say. option. You get an option. Oh, okay, okay. Thanks, Whoopi. Right? That, oh, no, okay. Oprah. Oprah, that's what it is. <laughs> Everyone gets an option. Everyone gets an option. Yeah, so this game's just like a variable crazy card game. Uh, I, I can't say much that I, I, I think negatively about it other than just it does have some mean aspects to it. And it can be quite aggressive. If you don't like that kind of thing, then you're probably not going to enjoy that aspect of the game. And you have to just variable it out. Switch it out. Change out the options. Make it a game you enjoy playing. Yeah. But overall, Enchanters is an excellent game. It's one of those games I can easily see funding very, very quickly. Not only just due to the quality and artwork, but also the style of play, how quick it is to learn, and how much game there is. You're not going to finish. You're not going to ever finish playing all the different combinations in this game. It's not possible. No. You will be moving on far beyond playing that, which is a good thing because if you ever decide to hand it off to somebody else, they're even going to get their own unique experiences, even from you. Yeah. Regardless, though, hundreds and hundreds of different styles of play, and every time it's so different, which is so cool. So cool. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Very cool. Very cool. Right. Yeah. yeah. Outro. All right, guys. Thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you enjoyed this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment, and watch the next video down in our timeline. More games on Kickstarter just like this one, Enchanters. Overlords. Uh, before we go, before I even talk anymore, I want to talk about some of the flavor text. I didn't get to talk about that, which is really, this is like, this. I don't know why I forgot. Uh, when you have your Fist of Enchanting, it's the same card, but they all have different flavor texts. Like, for instance, Fist, each finger, dot, 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 Enchanting. Can't wait to be properly enchanted. Or, you don't need an item when you have a fist that will become an artifact of unlimited power. So there's, uh, there's just flavor text on all these cards, and that's really cool. Uh, water, of, of water breathing, this one says, turns around you into oxygen and hydrogen. So when you put cards on, it gives you a flavor text that changes each and every time too. Anyway, I, I just, I wanted to mention that because I thought that was really cool. That alone made me get one point up on this game because it just had a lot of comedic value and it was a lot of fun. I remember one of them says, he gives 110%, dot, dot, dot and always ends up 1% short. <laughs> Go ahead and check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. I, I already said that. I already said that. Unfilteredgamer.com. Blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We're giving away a game right now, currently on the website. And of course, don't forget our live streams every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. PST. No, 6.30 p.m. PST every Wednesday. We've changed the time. Same day, though. As well as go ahead and check out our friends. Everythingboardgames.com the Giveaway Geek. Before you play and show me how to win, ton of great stuff. And don't forget the cardboard stacker over there. He's great as well. Alright, guys. That's all I got for you this time. And as always, I'd like to enchant with you. Or you enchant over here and I enchant over here next time. No, seriously. Just leave me alone when I'm playing this game. I want to... Leave me alone. I... Seriously. <laughs>